Let's learn how to build fast OpenAI applications with Next.js and Vercel Edge functions. We're gonna be using a side project I built called twitterbio.com as an example to showcase how you can build your own GPT-3 applications. Let's take a look at the application we're going to be working with. You copy in your current Twitter bio, you select your vibe, and then it uses GPT-3 to generate two updated bios. Let's take a look at the code. So here we have our Next.js applications and in the index page, we're gonna start with the UI. So I'm gonna scroll down to over here and you can see we have our uh, start with GitHub button over here, we have our heading, uh, and then we have all of these UI components down here, you know, the images uh, for this one and two, uh, and then the text area to collect the user's actual bio and a drop down down here to collect their vibe. And then finally a generate your bio button that when clicked will call this generate bio function, right? And then we have some loading logic and all the way down here, we're actually displaying the generated bios after we get this back from OpenAI. So let's go up and, and check out this generate bio function. Uh, but before that, let's talk about uh, these pieces of state. So we have some loading state, we have state for the user's bio, we have state for the user's vibe, and then we have state for the generated bios that we get back um, from, from OpenAI. And we're specifically using uh, GPT-3 from OpenAI, which actually functions pretty similar to chat GPT. So you actually have to send it a prompt, which is why we have this prompt variable over here uh, where we ask it like, hey, generate two Twitter bios with these specifications based on you know the user's current bio, right? And, and we, we basically link it here. Um, and then, you know, all the way down below when we're, uh, when we're actually displaying the generated bios, we tell it to split based on the number two, because remember we told it to send us two, uh, two generated bios that we're going to display. Uh, and then we each display them in, in their own, uh, kind of component, right? So, uh, kind of like we saw in the demo. So in this generate bio function is where we're calling our, uh, generate serverless function, which we'll check out in a second. Uh, with the prompt, we're getting back the prompt, we're setting it, and we're displaying it to the user, right? So if I put uh, Vercel CEO in here and I click generate your bio, we wait until uh, we get back this JSON and then we set the generated bios. And you may have noticed this actually behaves differently than the model that you just saw where results are being streamed in. And that's actually where we're gonna be using Vercel Edge functions. We'll get to that right after we take a look at this API function right here. So our generate API function is pretty standard. We're getting the prompt from the uh, request.body and we're constructing a payload. We're basically telling uh, OpenAPI, hey, use this specific model, which is, this is just GPT-3. Uh, and then we're sending it the prompt. We're awaiting a response from OpenAI. And then we're just returning it back to the front end to be displayed on the page over here. So that's one way to build this application, but there's actually an even better way. Let's take a look. The better way of building this application is using edge functions with streaming. Edge functions are similar to serverless Lambda functions, but smaller in size and more limited in terms of what Node.js libraries they support. For example, you can't use something like Prisma in an edge function right now. So why would we wanna use edge functions if they have these limitations? Two answers, speed and user experience. Because they're smaller than serverless functions and can run on the edge, they have no cold starts and are significantly faster. They also have a timeout of 30 seconds and even longer when streaming data, which is more than Vercel's serverless function timeout on the hobby tier. And number two, they allow for a much better user experience. With edge functions, you can stream data in as you get it, instead of needing to wait several seconds and showing the user a loading spinner before they finally see their data. Let's see this difference in action. Here we have the Lambda function version of our app on the right and the edge function version of our app on the left. We're gonna hit generate bio for both of these and we're gonna see why there's such a big difference in speed and user experience. So I'm gonna click, and I'm even gonna start with the, with the serverless function one. So I'm gonna click here and then click here and you can see the edge function one instantly is showing data and is, it's a much better user experience because I can see what's happening where with this one, we had to actually wait several seconds with that loading spinner before we saw anything. Let's dive into how we built the edge function version now. The code to do this with edge functions is a little bit different and we're gonna start with our uh, API function this time. All you need to do in Next.js to define this as an edge function is specify runtime edge, literally three lines of code 
and that's it. So here we're, we're getting the prompt like before, uh, we are constructing our payload like before, but what we're doing now is we're creating this stream using this open AI stream helper function that I've defined. So if we open it up over here, I'm not gonna go too deep into the code, but essentially it opens up a stream with open AI. So basically to enable OpenAI to send us back chunks of text as they come in. So we don't necessarily wait for, uh, you know, GPT-3 to generate all of that description and send it over like we traditionally would. We, for every like couple, for every word that comes in, we essentially stream it to the client, which is actually really, really cool. Um, you can take a, a look at this code uh, in more detail. I'll, I'll link it below. Uh, but that's our uh, generate API function. And in our front end, the only thing that changes is this generate bio function. So again, over here, we're, um, we're triggering our edge function and we're getting back the data. And this data is a stream, like we mentioned before. And what we're doing here essentially is we're looping through. And if we have a value that's coming from the stream and the stream is not done, uh, we take that value and we add it to our generated bio state. And that's how you can see results coming in, which allows for building faster applications with a great UI. Thank you so much for watching.